All right, S summer's over. The temperature in the air has cooled down. We're starting to get some fall rains. Our broccoli is about time to be harvested and all the summer crops are gone. Now we gotta move on to our winter crops and onions are a perfect thing to get started with in the south after all the heat is over with but before all the hard freezes get here. Now I'm late getting my onions in, but mainly because we had so much dry weather. We didn't have any rain during the whole month of November when I should have been putting onions in the ground. But we've got rain lately. I got my garden bed here, just about ready to go. We had grown uh, cow pea, black eyed pea, or purple hull peas is what we had in this bed. We cut the tops off, we got those out of here. We left the roots in the ground. The roots are gonna give off nitrogen. Onions are a heavy nitrogen feeding plant. So that's why we're gonna put onions into this bed is because we're already heading in the right direction of having nitrogen rich soil. One of the other things I gotta do is add a complete fertilizer. We're gonna go with this organic uh, holly tone. And holly tone, why holly tone? Because holly tone of all the organic fertilizers has a higher amount of sulfur and onions love sulfur. So we're gonna spread this over the bed. I'm gonna pull out my little uh, stirrup hoe here. We're gonna put this in. I'm gonna grab my onion marking gauge here that I made out of nails and just a scrap board lying around. We're gonna mark off rows 10 inches wide and we have 75 plants to fit into this one bed. We're gonna do a white Valdea type of uh, onion. Gr uh, Yellow Granix is the name of it. And then we're gonna do a, a purple onion. So we have two beds of onions to plant this year. Reason we're gonna do with two, two, uh, uh, two different types of onions is, we use a lot of onions to cook with. Michelle uses it in with all of our peppers. We grew out an extra 30 varieties of peppers. We're getting some really nice pepper blends put together and it's really gonna change the flavor of how we're cooking. So let's go ahead and get started. This ground was initially broke before November, so it's pretty well soft. Now I've got some little seedling plants coming up in here, like this uh, nut sedge. I'm gonna get that out of there cause you cannot let that stuff take hold. We're just gonna grab our handful of our organic fertilizer, Espoma. We're just gonna broadcast this over the top of the soil. Now you see our Tabasco peppers here? They come back every year from a fresh seed that drops to the ground. And every year we let it grow in this general area. I'll just pick one or two plants to let grow. And then that's what we make our Tabasco sauce through the holidays for uh, pepper vinegar to put over our turnip greens. And this year we're gonna be trying some of our broccoli leaves, which I heard makes an excellent uh, replacement for like a collard. Some people even say that broccoli greens are better than a collard green. But these will be finishing up because next week is Christmas. And usually right around that time, we have a hard freeze. And when we have our hard freeze, these peppers will be gone. They'll be out of here. We'll pull them out. So they won't be overshading any of our onions that we have. And then our onions will stay in this bed. We plan to usually harvest our onions around May and maybe even into June. So get a nice healthy dose of organic fertilizer. In years past, we've always done our rows six inches apart, and we've had nice onions. This year we're gonna grow them a little further apart, simply because when I got ready to remove the dirt from around the onion, it was hard because all the plants were so close together and whenever you're weeding and you're pulling, trying to get weeds in and out of those tightly spaced onions, it's just too problematic. So we're gonna go with a wider 10 inch spacing on our onions this year. 
just run my stirrup throw, hoe through here. And this is just to work the fertilizer into the soil. This soil has never really been compacted or hard. We don't walk on it. I try not to till it more than just a couple of inches off the top whenever I'm working in something like this. But um, I generally don't do any more of the, the deep till stuff since we're, uh, we've put a lot of compost in here. The soil really never packs down anymore. Somebody was talking about what's their favorite garden tool to use. And I think this little hoe right here, stirrup hoe, because weeds coming and going, pushing and pulling, is the best, best tool I have for the whole entire garden. I absolutely get more use out of this than any of my other tools. All right, we got that mixed in a little bit. Just take our rake, we'll even out the dirt so that we can mark off nice even rows. You see over there, I got that pipe laying on the ground. That's my irrigation pipe. Once I get everything planted, I pull those little sprinkler heads and they spray a pattern about this big around. So I put one sprinkler here, one over there. And it keep, generally keeps the entire bed um, watered. I've been kind of happy with that. We put that in a few years ago and I didn't have to use it this much through the summer because it rained all the time this summer and I didn't have to irrigate not one time. But I do get a lot of use out of that whenever it is dry. Just to keep my, as you can see the broccoli plants, they look good. I had to water them a few times through the month of November. All right. Some leftover pea debris in there. Some of my pea plants. Fairly well evened out now. We're just going to grab this stick, put it right into the bed, and we just drag this along, and each one of those nails leave a row. So that's how we mark off our rows. Now, I bought my onions over a month ago with anticipation we were going to put them in the ground right away. I got busy with something else, it didn't happen, dry weather hit us like I said. Let's go over and get our onions. I've got them healed into a little uh, flower pot over there. And let's see what the onions have done in the month that they've been in the bed. maybe 45 minutes of daylight left. All right, I'm getting ready to pull these onions out of this, uh, this little bed here where we have them healed in. And I want to I get a good look at the roots. 
And I don't remember if these are the, the yellow granites or the purple. But look at there. They look, they look really nice. Good looking starter onions, plenty of roots on those. Good strong sets. All right, the yellow granites it is. Let's go ahead and go get these yellow granites in. The good thing about having an enclosed garden is keeping the cats out while you're filming those. <laughs> That's a pretty good guide that way. And I was thinking, if we squeeze them this way, not tried this one before, but if we march some rows this way, it shows us a grid pattern of nicely split, nicely spaced plants. So we're gonna give this a shot real quick and see how this works out for us. And then there we have a grid pattern, 10 inches on, uh, on square. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging in some onions. Now, we figured out that we should be able to get 72 onions in here. There's usually 75 onions to a bundle, bundle but some of them are really weak. Like you get a couple of these mixed in so those will be the last to plug in. First thing we want to do is we want to grab our strongest ones and make sure that they get planted first. Now, you got a couple ways you can do this. One of the ways I've done it in the past is you just lay your onion, the ends of your onions down where they're going to get pushed into the dirt. And once we have our onions laid out where we want those to go, just take the end of your finger, put it right there at where the roots are at, and just push the onion roots right into the ground, covering up the bowl. And it doesn't matter how deep you really plant these, you're gonna have to come back and pull the dirt away from the bulbs whenever it's time for them to start bulbing. Now these are a short day variety, which means onions bulb according to how many hours of daylight there are in a day. So around May, you start getting into the appropriate uh, amount of hours and the bulb will start to, to swell out on these. You have to take a tool or your hand, you have to come in, you have to pull that dirt away from each one of these roots to give that onion uh, bulb room to grow out over the top, on top of the ground. And essentially, that's all it is to plant onions. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, speed this up. All right. All right. We got down to it, we had three left over. So we're gonna have to plug these in. Just pick a random spot, they're small. These won't get big. Maybe you can harvest them for chives or something. And we'll just put these right in between the rows just to kind of give them a, a fighting chance. All right. That's all there is to it is for planting onions. Nice, simple, and easy. There's nothing to it. I encourage everyone to buy a pack of seeds, put some onions in the ground, go buy you some sets, put some onions in the ground. Now you'll go to, in the spring, you'll see the bigger onion sets that are dormant. Stay away from those, those are trash. Get you some uh, nice starts like this that don't have the bulb on them yet and go out and plant you a bed of onions. 
Now, once these get established and start growing in a week or two, we'll come back and we'll give them a light uh, fertilizer over the top, maybe a fish emulsion or something like that. But anyway, the onions like a high nitrogen diet and we're just gonna be feeding nitrogen up until the day we harvest. Hope you enjoyed this clip. Stay tuned for updates. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share on your social media. And leave us a comment below if you enjoyed the video and what variety of onions you like to plant.